In Baltimore, a cargo ship hit a pillar of the Scott Key Bridge, shaking the structure and making it collapse into the river. At least seven cars fell into the water and right now cops are out there looking for missing people. Luckily no one in the crew got injured. Let's try to clarify what happened, examining the events and what we currently know about the possible causes. In order to show this incredible accident we created exclusive 3D animations so we can check out the bridge collapsing from different points of view and we can also get a closer look at what might have happened. We are Jupop, we are Italians. We create video to make people passionate about science and culture. Have a look on our channel and if you like it, please subscribe. We're in Baltimore, Maryland, and it's about 1.30 in the morning. Let me show you the route that the ship was supposed to take. So the ship would have departed from here, from Baltimore. The ship was supposed to cross the Atlantic Ocean. It would have passed through South Africa, Madagascar, and finally reached Sri Lanka at the port of Colombo, and would have arrived on April 22nd at approximately 4.30 p.m. Unfortunately, however, the ship won't even be able to leave the United States. Now let's go and see the 3D animation that we created based on the images captured by the port's surveillance cameras. Shortly after the ship left, the lights went out for several seconds and smoke began to come out. Then the lights came back on, went out again, and after a few moments, the collision occurred. It's interesting to see that the last time the power went out, the ship also started to turn, hitting the bridge pylon. Unfortunately, due to the collision, the center section of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed. Unfortunately, at least seven cars and more than 20 workers who were carrying out maintenance work ended up in the water. The authorities quickly rushed to the scene with other ships to recover the survivors, and this is clear from the images of the port traffic in the area. So, if we look here, the largest ship is the Dali ship that got involved in the accident, while all those smaller boats around are the rescue teams and the authorities. These are the facts. Now, as you might guess, an official state of emergency was declared, the major roads were diverted, and this disaster is likely going to hit the city's economy hard. But beyond that, I think there are actually two big questions we need to answer now. The first is, how come the ship hit the bridge? And the second is, why it collapsed so easily? Before answering, I have to make a premise. We still don't know anything official about the accident. We can only make some assumptions. But let's get back to our questions. How come the ship hit the pylon of the bridge? At the moment, a possible hypothesis to explain what happened comes from David McFarlane, the director of Maritime Risk and Safety Consultants, a private Scottish company that deals with maritime investigations. According to Sky News, it could be a technical failure, probably something wrong with the engines or the steering. Obviously, as I said before, we can't know for sure what happened until the technicians carry out all the necessary assessments. Another theory, though, is that it was a navigation error, but this is a bit less likely, because at the time of the crash, there were two pilots on board, so it's kind of hard to believe that both of them didn't see the bridge's pylon. Not to mention that the absence of light on board, as we said before, could be a sign that perhaps something was not working as it should have. However, you should know that Grace Ocean, which is the company of the ship, has issued a first press release in which is stated that the entire crew, including the two pilots, are not injured, and that at the moment there is no risk of pollution. This actually needs to be clarified given that some rumors speak of fuel spills in the water. We'll keep you updated once we have more reliable information on the matter. In any case, according to the Baltimore police, there is no evidence that the impact was the result of a deliberate action. So, in other words, we have no reason to suspect that they did it on purpose. Guys, little quick update while we were editing the video. According to what was declared by a cybersecurity company, it seems that before the crashing, the ship communicated some problems. Problems like propulsion, so they lost control of the ship and then crashed into the bridge. Obviously, this information still needs to be verified, but let's say that the hypothesis of a technical issue for now seems to be the most likely. Question number two. Why did the bridge collapse so easily? To answer, let's try to understand how this bridge was made. Built in 1977, Francis Scott Key is, or rather was, one of the main connecting routes of the city. In short, it had a steel metal arch as its key element. This one supported the road, which was therefore suspended. In turn, this arch rested on the pylons, so the ship hitting the reinforced concrete pylon took away a support from the arch. 
Therefore, the structure no longer had a firm support point, so it collapsed and then destabilized a good part of the bridge. We should also consider that the pylon that was hit was the one with the longest span, supporting the longest stretch of road between one pylon and another. This did nothing but increase the instability of the structure. This was also confirmed by structural engineer Ian Firth on the BBC. I'll quote you exactly what he said. The support is a very relatively flimsy structure. When you look at it, it's a kind of trestle structure with individual legs. So the bridge has collapsed simply as a result of this very large impact force. However, as Fire Brigade spokesman Kevin Cartwright also confirmed, an investigation carried out by structural engineers will soon be open to observe the conditions of the bridge at the time of the collapse. Alright guys, thanks for following me. I hope this video was useful in providing some clarity, even if, as I told you, more detailed information will be released in the next days, so we'll certainly inform you about further updates. Indeed, if you have any specific curiosities, write them below in the comments so we can keep them in mind for future content. We'll see you again for the next video, always here on Geopop Everyday Science.